Hi, everyone. My name is Jules Urbach. I am the uh, CEO and founder of Otoy. Uh, and Otoy uh, has uh, several products that uh, connect with Unity, but many may be familiar with Octane Render, which ships uh, for free with Unity since uh, Unity 2017. So I'm here to talk about that and also talk about our grander vision for where rendering is going in the uh, next decades. So our vision is uh, really to democratize rendering and graphics, both for real time, both for cinematic content. They're very similar in many ways. We've been doing this for about 10 years. Um, today our, our software is used to render these beautiful uh, cinematic shots that are in movies and television, the opening of Westworld you're seeing here, uh, the opening of The Crown, a uh, little later in this presentation, I'll show some of the recent movie work like Ant-Man and the Wasp, but basically this stuff is absolutely beautiful and it's powered by Octane Render, which does picture or higher quality rendering, in fact, on a GPU. And Octane's always been on the GPU. It's revolutionized the time and the speed that you can get to this quality rendering and it's very easy to use. So our mission really in democratizing rendering has been about bringing this quality to millions of users. So that's why we partnered with Unity and chose to make Octane free on a single GPU at least uh, for all of Unity users. Now our mission to create the holodeck and to build all these tools started well over 10 years ago. Uh, back in the day when we were exploring how, to, you know, how a holodeck might work, um, you know, we had very limited technology, but we were still going at it from three different perspectives. How do we capture the real world and how do we display it holographically? And what you're seeing here is a light stage capture, uh, which is a holographic capture and a spinning mirror. The spinning mirror gives you a light field display, a holographic display. It's the closest we came to seeing something that was right out of Star Wars or Star Trek. And uh, that was 10 years ago. So that light stage just got dismantled, but you can see that capture was playing back on the holographic spinning mirror display. And it was exciting. It was really exciting to, to be at that point 10 years ago. And today, we're 2019, um, we've taken pieces of this technology, um, much of what you're seeing there was developed by um, the, the people that work at Otoy today, and uh, we've sort of compartmentalized into three products, Light Stage, Octane, which I just was briefing you guys on earlier, and then Orbex, which is our streaming and holographic media format. So I'll briefly cover each of those a little bit and how they connect to Unity. On the capture side, um, we've been doing very high-end captures of Light Stage. That, that what you see there uh, on the very right is a, um, uh, is, is a big Light Stage. That's where we put in actors for Star Wars and Marvel movies. We've also been working on getting data sets that could work in video games. And Light Stage is pretty special. I mean, the quality of those captures isn't just color and depth. It's a full reflectance field. All the shaders for skin are just encoded in the capture. So you get really good looking results out of that that are, that are absolutely easy to shade and relight. And on the other side of things, we've been focused on bubbles of holographic capture for light fields. This is an early test that we did, uh, similar to what, what the uh, Google Light Fields demo uh, that you guys may have seen does. But we've also been you know, working with partners on building cameras that could bring this to market. And so one of those partnerships is with Facebook. Um, last year, they announced that Red would be building these cameras. This is the Red Manifold camera. You can rent it. And Otoy's part in this pipeline is that it allows you to take the data from the red camera, turn it into a volumetric asset that could be used in a bunch of tools. Uh, we provide the cloud service, we provide the integration in things like Foundry's Nuke and, and other elements as well. But most importantly, if you look on the right there, Unity is an uh, important point of integration. So at F8 last year, or two years ago actually, we, as we were developing this technology, we showed the Facebook six dot video camera system working in Unity, working through Octane, and it's, it's really nice. It's nicely integrated, so we can't wait for these cameras and others to come to market. On the rendering side, I had sort of given you guys a brief overview of Octane. We've been working on Octane for 10 years, uh, and we started off modestly enough just focused on our architecture visualization. We started new animations a couple of years later. By Octane 3, sort of in the middle of that graph in 2015 or 2016, that's when we started to see real uh, cinematic productions using Octane, all on the GPU. You know, people weren't convinced that GPU rendering was going to compete with CPU rendering. We're at a point today where that's no longer a question. And towards you know, 2016, 2017, 18, we focused on real-time integration. And that's why the work that we're doing to integrate Octane and Unity is so important. Um, and beyond that, you know, we need to solve all sorts of hard problems to make all of this work on holographic displays, which are coming. Those things are very real, and I'll end with that at the, uh, in, in, a, in a little bit. But in the meantime, I'm going to talk a little bit about Octane. So again, a lot of shows that are you know, won Emmys rendered with Octane all on the GPU. Ant-Man and the Wasp rendered in Octane, the title sequence all on the GPU. Uh, most recently, very proud of this, Doom Patrol on the um, uh, DC Universe uh, TV uh, streaming app, all rendered in Octane. And, uh, and so I figured it would be good to go over some of the features that have 
been released um, since our last presentation at Unite and even since SIGGRAPH. Um, Octane 4 was released in November. It is free to Unity users. The uh, key features in that release, uh, for last year's release, was that we integrated Brigade Engine. Brigade is a real-time path tracer. Uh, we also have AI denoising, and we have out-of-core geometry. That means you can store data in CPU memory and still runs fast on the GPU. So Brigade's a very special piece of tech. It's, it's been around for a long time. We integrated in Octane. It allows you to do real-time path tracing, even without RTX. Um, this is running on a 680, and it's completely dynamic. And we integrated that into Octane, and with that, we were able to get game mode inside of Octane working with the Brigade uh, framework, and we're not done with that. That was something that we had just, we felt that was the tip of the iceberg of what we could be doing. Another important piece of technology towards real time that we added in Octane 4 was denoising. So this is the built-in AI denoiser. It's, uh, it's custom for Octane. It's able to go through glass and other surfaces really nicely. And I think it's pretty well known now that the future of rendering is gonna be a combination of ray tracing, you know, uh, certainly hardware accelerated ray tracing, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but also denoising. Denoising is so important, it's fundamental really to getting to real time. And the ecosystem that Octane's integrated into, and that Unity by default is also integrated into, covers 26 different tools. You can export your Cinema 4D scenes, bring them into Unity, they look perfect. And all the lighting, all the materials, everything is absolutely preserved. And that's something that no other integration, I think, gives you. I mean, there's a lot of other ways to bring in things like Alembic files, USD is coming, but Orbex, this interchange format that Octane has works today and it can be you know, amazing. I mean, that's how we're able to take any cinematic asset and do stuff in Unity right out of the box. So we were showing this stuff at, uh, at, many, you know, very, you know, at different Unites showing how Octane could work inside of Unity. And uh, earlier this year, we released Octane 2018. It was a you know, sort of a short four month uh, window of a release cycle, but we did some amazing features that is now available to all Unity users. You have super fast cinematic volumetric delighting you have uh, procedural shapes like fractals. You can code those in shaders, and they look absolutely awesome. Uh, and you have these fractal lights and fractal um, uh, light volumes and fractal shapes that you can completely control. And that's now in Unity user's hands. So the thing that I'm most excited to announce today is Octane 2019, which we just put out yesterday, uh, and we're going through, um, you know, we just announced it this week. So these are the features that are coming this year to Octane and most of them are available right now. Uh, the Unity build will be out uh, in about a week or so, and currently you can test these features in Octane Standalone. We put a test build out on the forums, and Octane 2019 is pretty amazing. So this is a clip that we are doing to test the engine, show how fast we can render cinematic content. Uh, unfortunately, there's no audio in this clip um, right now because of an audio issue, but you can see how beautiful this is. This is made by Big Lazy Robot on two GPUs, a few seconds of frame, and it looks phenomenal. This is a keloid clip and they'll be releasing a full two minute trailer in Octane 2019 shortly. So we're very proud of how far the tools have come and how easy it is for artists to create absolutely stunning cinematic pieces of work like this. Um, so Octane 2019.1 is the first release of, of Octane 2019 that has everything you're gonna see here. It's out uh, on the forums today. Uh, the very first thing that we um, added in, in this release was a much improved AI denoiser for volume. So if you can see on the right, that's the new volume denoiser. It's about three times better than the old one. So we just re keep retraining uh, noisy scenes with our AI system and the AI denoiser just gets better. It's, it's a really awesome um, ability and it really just requires us to do more training. It doesn't require a lot of extra coding on our part. We've also added something that's much more artist friendly for, for Unity users as well as, as just other DCC integrations. You can now do layered materials. It's almost like Photoshop layers. So you can just add a specular on top of a diffuse. You can have two specular layers. It makes creating things like car paint super easy. Uh, you can do um, terrain based layers. You can finally, you know, and it's physically correct. So you can do a, you know, a bump map and a specular layer that does raindrops on glass and all of that looks correct. Uh, things that were kind of hard to do with mixed materials, really easy to do now. So emissive layers beneath uh, a couple of layers of specular with a fingerprint on it, decals, all of that becomes easier. Thin wall materials, uh, user requested feature, we added that. And basically stacking materials is, is really simple now in Octane 2019. It's, it's trivial to add decals and do projected texture layers. All of that is built in and the design was you know, meant to, to be fast, to be easy for artists to use and we're very proud of that. So it's something that, that doesn't have any speed hit in Octane and it makes a big difference for the flexibility of the materials that you have in the engine. The other major change, and probably it's one of the biggest ones in Octane 2019, is we have procedural displacement and that means you can do uh, vector displacement maps like an ear from Mudbox. You can also create completely procedural OSL shaders that are 
fed into the uh, vertex attributes of, um, of geometry. And that's a huge improvement over the texture-based displacement that we had in Octane previously. So you can mix these things together. We have um, the ability for you to mix different uh, vector maps, different procedurals. You know, I'm showing here, I'm taking a, um, a vector map and a height map and I'm blending them together. All of this is done live. There's no baking necessary. It's really, really cool and it's really fast. So part of the reason why we had to create a new displacement system beyond, of course, the artist-driven features and reasons for it is RTX hardware, as you'll see, makes a huge difference for Octane. And we had to basically come up with a vertex-based displacement system with all of these features to take advantage of that. The other big change that we've done, which I think is the first for any GPU renderer, is that we have OSL shaders and procedurals inside of volumes. So you can always, you know, in Octane import uh, volumetric uh, shaders, but now you can completely drive them procedurally. You can create clouds in Octane. You can have an entire terrain and world system now, and it's absolutely awesome. And there is a big you know, difference this makes when you want to basically upload changing volumetric data. You don't have to go to Houdini and bake it. You can just drive shaders in Octane and it'll, t it'll do that live. It won't have to send or bake anything into host memory. It'll just work. And that's a really, really nice feature. The other big uh, requested feature people wanted is built-in rounded edges that are really high quality, so we added that. Um, you have the ability to use faster or more, ac more accurate versions, and the quality for rounded edges is pretty great. Um, somebody's clapping. I, yes, it was highly requested. So that's in Octane 2019. Uh, we are also at going ahead and just building primitives. Like everyone who is using the Unity integration was telling us, you know, why don't you have a built-in spotlight? Why don't you have a directional light? So all of those things are going to be built in Spectron, but we also have geometric primitives for those things. And those lights, those disk lights, those area lights will be sampled with high, much higher precision quality in Octane 2019, so they will render faster. The other thing that a lot of users were asking for is they wanted to have distortion maps from Nuke. You can bring those into Octane now. You can have chromatic aberration. You can have all sorts of crazy stuff. It's in something called the universal camera. You can have textures um, that also affect the aperture. So you have your custom bokeh shapes. You can see in here for the keloid clip, they have different you know, rotary blades in the, in the lens that make it look like it's, um, you know, the, the, you know it, it gives you just really awesome aberration effects. And the other highly requested feature that's in this version of Octane is you have bloom and glare threshold so that you're able to really cut off you know, highlights in a nice way and that's something that makes a big difference in the post-processing stack in Octane. The other um, feature which I think is sort of this awesome um, you know, just cheat or win is that we have AI upsampling. So we have the AI denoiser which you know, temporally, sorry, it, it denoises uh, so you save time in terms of the render but we have something here where we're rendering at a quarter of the resolution and I'm skipping back and forth between on and off, you can't tell that one of these is a four minute render and the other one's a one minute render. And that's pretty cool. Um, AI upsampling is something that we've trained, uh, we trained Octane teams on specifically to let you render at a quarter the speed, uh, sorry, four times the speed, a quarter the time. And a lot of scenes just look the same. So you can also use that to render at 4K and upsample that to 16K. We used that for a video wall last year, it works great. So we're excited to ship that in 2019 and get that in users' hands. Now, we're not done with this version. We're having three Octane 2019 releases this year. So this is a preview of Octane 2019.2. Uh, that'll be out this summer. Uh, and it has some really awesome features. One of them is, our, all the work we've been doing on Metal, we can finally run enough of Octane on a local you know, MacBook. And you still need to have a network slave somewhere that's doing some of the CUDA work, but it's able to run headlessly on the Mac. And we can now run, you know, with, without any sort of wires or eGPUs, you can run Octane on a MacBook, on, on Mac OS. And that's pretty sweet. So that's, uh, that's shipping in Octane 2019.2. We have a lot of Mac users. We definitely want to support them on laptops. So that's a huge improvement. We're adding something called Random Walk. Random Walk is a, um, is a really advanced form of subsurface scattering. It, it gives you beautiful results. The other thing that's awesome about this implementation in Octane, it is three times faster than the old subsurface scattering. So this is running, uh, I think it's running on my laptop, on this laptop here. And you can see that random walk scattering effect is actually resolving really fast. So we probably with denoising, we can get this to run in real time. And that sort of subsurface scattering effect is awesome for skin. It's super high end and it's beautiful. The other uh, highly requested feature that we're adding in 2019.2 is hair rendering. There's a special hair shader. It looks absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, yeah, you can see nice strands and everything. They have nice highlights in there. So that shader is able to um, to really sort of complete the material and cinematic pipeline that we wanted to have this year in Octane. Skin and hair are really hard to render fast, and we're doing it in a spectrally correct way, so we're pretty proud of that. Unity users will have access to all of this. Uh, we are also going after sort of more high-end rendering features that are important for, you know, if you're really looking at, at, at quiescent physical uh, quality rendering, so fluorescence, phosphorescence, polarized lighting, 
Uh, those were really important for the absolute you know, highest fidelity. Those will be in, uh, inside of Octane 2019. And then we're also working on tune shading, improved tune shading that allows you to do you know, animated ray traced edges. It's actually its own rendering kernel. And by the end of the year, we're also adding a lot of other features from third party formats. So OSL trace sets will be supported. Uh, custom AOVs will be able to support Open Color IO, which is a standard that's used in film production. UFD and Hydra support will be built into Octane. We are also committing to support MDL materials. And um, Houdini will be able to export uh, BDBs with uh, attributes inside of points. That'll be supported in Octane as well. So all of that is covering a lot of the changes coming to the material and rendering pipeline. But one of the biggest changes is ray tracing hardware. So RTX uh, was introduced by NVIDIA last year. There's a special chip in, them, in, in that hardware that allows you to do ray tracing. We're familiar with that. We were testing ray tracing hardware years and years ago with Imagination, and we were finding that ray tracing hardware was 10 times faster than GPU rendering you know, on, on compute. And that turned out to be true with the NVIDIA hardware as well. So when they shipped that, we started to put out benchmarks that showed you know, 2080 running Octane basically could be up to 10 times faster with RTX mode on. And so our benchmarks have been out now for about a month. Yesterday, we put out another uh, a version of Octane that actually previews RTX rendering with real scenes. You can try yourself, and the speed up is insane. I mean, this is our Octane 3 benchmark scene, and it is seven and a half times faster on a 2080 Ti with RTX on, versus the same GPU, not a, not a 1080, but a 2080 Ti, RTX on, seven and a half times faster. This far scene, which is our Octane 2014 video demo, four to six times faster. Even interior scenes with you know, full path tracing, 24 bounces, three times faster. This is crazy. That's basically like having you know, three extra GPUs or seven extra GPUs for the cost of one. So RTX fundamentally changes the cost equation for both real-time and offline rendering. And getting back to real-time, you know, this is all for offline, right? This is all for high qual highest quality, no compromise, com no compromise. And we're still getting this insane speed up. But what if we created a kernel? What if we went back to Brigade and said, let's create a, a special kernel for RTX that always gives you that five to 10 times speed up but it's designed for real time. And that's what we're doing this year. So we're building a brigade kernel that is able to do noise-free rendering. This is not without it. This is not using the denoiser. And um, let me go back to the slide right here. Um, and, and it's really cool because basically, even before we had the denoiser, and this is running, I think, at 4K 60, uh, you're, you're also able to see that it's pushing about 6 billion rays a second. That's close to the theoretical maximum of the, uh, of the, of the ray tracing cores. And it has perfect AO. It has perfect GI. And it does come with a compromise. You have to flatten the material tree down. You can't edit materials while it's in this mode, but you can certainly move around the scene. And if you have something like this, which is a really complicated scene in Octane, um, it'll, it'll still look really good. So this is running that uh, Brigade Kernel at 60 hertz, pretty massive scene, no denoiser um, in AO mode. And when you run the same RTX kernel with all the materials flattened, um, it looks beautiful. And this is running, I mean, this could run at 16K. It's so fast. Um, it, it runs really, really, really nicely. And it's, it's something that's gonna be awesome for real time. So we've also shown a lot of other techniques that allow you to do light fields and, and to sort of simplify things, but this is with the full scene geometry. We can even get this running on iOS. So this is running an AR kit, and that same scene now is running at 47 frames a second on an iPad Pro, so that's pretty amazing. That's Brigade RTX running on iOS, and we have full Octane running as well. We can do full path tracing, but this mode allows us to, you know, to go for real time, and that means we can also do AR integration, which is great. Uh, and I, showed, I teased this a little bit last year. We are also working on full, you know, full scene relighting while you're rendering in AR mode with these Octane scenes exported from Unity, and it looks absolutely awesome. So this is from our uh, you know, SIGGRAPH uh, video wall last year. You're seeing that object being relit live. That's very hard to do. AR kit normally just does probes of lighting. It doesn't do real-time stuff like this. And the quality looks absolutely amazing and noise-free. So we think there's a huge future for these kinds of things where you know, a lot of um, people have taken you know, videos in Octane and actually done um, you know, sort of cheats you know, in AR, and they look really good. But now we'll be able to do this live in AR kit um, with Octane with Unity integration. And we're very proud of that. So some of you guys may have seen Adam was actually rendered by one of our users in Octane with C4D and they put it in HDR and it got 10 million views. It was absolutely bonkers. But truthfully, that thing now, that same technology, we have that ability to take Octane's rendering quality and do it live, which is what you're seeing on the left side with relighting, all of that working in there and making that very simple. Um, there's probably, this talk isn't a bridge talk, so enough time to go into how we can bring in all the interactive pieces for Unity in there. But you know, if you look at some of my previous presentations, you know, it's possible to do all of that. Uh, on the streaming side of things, we do have light field rendering. It's still something you can mix in with the uh, Brigade RTX kernel. So if you don't have 
the data to store you know, hundreds of megabytes of scene geometry. This is you know, the solution for you. Uh, it works basically with six polygons and any scene complexity, and it can be fully animated. So you have tons and tons of um, opportunities mixing this with what I was showing before. Uh, and there's no, there's no cost even to, to storing this locally. As we were showing here, you can actually take a light field from the server, from the cloud, stream that in into a polygon in AR, VR, and that is running on one, you know, 0.5 megabits a second. Works just as well for AR as well, so if you just have a purely light field server-side stream, it'll run. And the light fields are expensive to render, so that is why we had started building a network of decentralized GPUs. Uh, in addition to having, you know, GPUs that are there dedicated for this task on Amazon, you know, Uni your Unity scenes can be sent to the cloud through Octane and rendered for these purposes, but we decided to build a decentralized Ethereum-backed uh, render token network and we had about a week of signups, 14,000 GPUs. We have more rendering power than we have ever had on the public cloud. And there's probably way more that we can get. There's hundreds of millions of GPUs, high-end GPUs that are out there that have been used for cryptocurrency mining. And we plan to leverage all of them because we will pay out more by offloading work from the public cloud to these users than they'll ever make mining Ethereum. So we're pretty confident that we'll have 100 times the rendering power in a year than we do today. So render is its own thing. There's definitely a lot more details on the web. If you follow Render Token on Twitter uh, or go to rendertoken.com, tons of more you know, inf information is presented there. And with the time I have left, I think I've got a few minutes, I want to talk about how we're actually going to get to the holodeck in the 2020s. So it's not as crazy a thought as, as I imagined a few years back. I, I just, you know, I, I really was wondering when you get to high density displays, and it turns out that we're here. Um, at my last United presentation, I talked a little bit about this company. They're called Lightfield Lab. We partnered with them in October um, after working with them for a long time, really vetting their technology, and they make true holographic display panels. And in the 2020s, you're going to see these panels come out. They're going to be um, large format panels first. They're going to be for probably the Disneyland's and the theme parks and concerts and the like, but it'll eventually become consumer grade. And they're basically two foot by two foot panels in their, in their final form that you can stitch together. So you can make a true holodeck with these things. Um, the panels can be used to make, obviously, very large-scale um, holographic displays. But I think the real sweet spot is going to be tabletop holographic panels. You can touch them, by the way. They're working on ultrasonics that give you the ability to have coarse touch. So that's going to be the input mechanism. And if you have you know, tens of millions of dollars, you can buy enough of these panels and put them into a true holodeck. Um, you, can, you, know, you can have floor, you know, they can connect, they can be curved. It's like the Samsung video wall, um, only it's holographic. And so the panels currently exist in a prototype form that's six by four inches, and we've been working on how to get the content and, and, and it, sort of an SDK ready for that. So we started by basically t using head tracking, me closing one eye, and then projecting a light field, which works really well, actually, to my, to my one eye, just to see how that effect would look like without wearing glasses or doing anything else. And it worked pretty well. That was what we were doing, like I think, a year and a half ago. At SIGGRAPH, we started to show this demo, which is really compelling, but you can't really show it in, in here, which has head tracking with a Vive. I wear a cap, and I'm having shutter glasses. And I can start to see in stereo how a true holographic display will work. And it's really cool. I mean, that's the same scene you guys were seeing before. The holographic display is 16K by 10K. That's why we need that RTX kernel to drive it at that speed. And this scene, I've seen... You know, both on the, on the display that we have here, this projector, this head tracking projector, and on the real display. And I have to tell you that the door, that coat hanger, these things are popping up off the holographic display and they look real. You can put a magnifying glass through it. There's nothing I've seen like it. It's truly a light filled display. And you know, the beauty of this is that they just make a few of these panels and you, can, and you can then tile them together. So that's a six by four inch. There's only so far you can pop out of it, but the bigger the display surfaces for these holographic panels, the further the pop out effect can work. And if it's really large, you can have something that truly encompasses your entire field of view and gives you an immersive experience. And if that goes into your room, your, your garage, you know, it could be in the sides of buildings. If you turn into wearable clothing in 15 years' time, it's going to change the world. And I have to tell you that if you don't have to wear glasses to have a volumetric experience, I mean, if you just look at 3D TVs, which had very lightweight polarized glasses, nobody bought them. Those things didn't go away. And, you know, those things didn't survive. They went away, right? This... I think tells you that if there's a way to give you volumetric experiences, AR and VR like, without wearing anything, people will go for it. I mean, I think this will coexist with AR and VR, but it certainly will be its own thing and it's gonna be super compelling. So I'm excited for that future and I hope you guys are too. So that's my talk. I don't know how much time we have left, but I think hopefully we have time for a few more questions, if there are any. Thank you. 
Hey, thanks for that. Um, one of our team members is working a lot in uh, Octane and Cinema 4D. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing. Okay, sorry. Oh, sorry, hey. Uh, one of our team members in a different office to me is working on a lot of uh, Cinema 4D and Octane. Yep. How hard is it then to take his project files, direct it into Unity, and then throw them into like a, a game environment? Or is that just plug and play it's now? It's pretty easy. If you, if it depends on, sorry, can you guys still hear me okay? It's very easy to import C4D assets into Octane. We, if you save, save an Orbex from C4D, you can just load that as an Orbex proxy in Unity, and it'll just render. Now, it'll render with a bounding box initially. If you want the scene geometry, we can basically convert that Orbex into a Unity scene geometry as well. You just don't get the materials. It has to use a, a Unity material Orbex override, but that, that basically covers everything that's polygonal geometry. It'll work. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you very much, everyone.